Acts chapter 17, I'm going to begin reading in verse 16, Acts 17, verse 16. Acts 17, verse number 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And let's pray. Father in heaven, I do ask you tonight to help me to be able to deliver this message in such a way that it would be beneficial to your people. And Lord, uh, as always, at the same time, uh, uplifting and honoring and glorifying to you. Uh, may all these things work together for you to accomplish what you want to do in our midst uh, tonight. And uh, Lord, uh, even, even as importantly, going forward, uh, what we do with it from here. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll draw your attention tonight to, uh, as we begin to Acts chapter 17, verse number 21. And that's the last verse that we read. It said, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there, spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. Now, I want to particularly point out a little phrase in there uh, where it says, spent their time, spent their time. Uh, tonight, I want to uh, ask you a question as I bring you a message, and that is, uh, how are you spending your time? It is an interesting term, spending your time. It's one of a number of monetary terms that are attached to time, spending time. Uh, we spend time and we spend money. As a matter of fact, some people say time is money, another monetary term <laughs> that is uh, attached to time. You know, each of us has a limited amount of money, and then we each have a limited amount of time. And just as we make choices about how to spend money, we make choices about how to spend our time. Uh, you take your money. If you friv frivolously spend your money, you'll likely run short of it uh, when you need it. And, and find yourself wishing that you had more and hadn't wasted uh, it uh, frivolously. If you frivolously spend your time, you'll likely run short of it and find yourself in need of more, wishing that you had not wasted it uh, in, in order to be able to uh, get done all that you need to get done. Um, if that hasn't happened to you recently, think back perhaps when you were a kid and you had a deadline, maybe a, an exam coming a test or a final exam or some assignment that was due. And, uh, you know, you frittered away the time, you frittered away the time, you frittered away the time, and then uh, it was over. Uh, I think of grade school. <coughs> we were given uh, an assignment, something that needed to be done uh, when we got back from Christmas vacation. And, and, and what kind of a mean teacher it must be to give you an assignment that's going to be due when you get back from Christmas vacation. <laughs> But, um, man, you know, you look ahead Christmas vacation, a couple weeks. And, uh, and by the way, we, I still call it Christmas vacation. I know they call it winter break now. But guess why they have winter break? <laughs> because that's it, because of Christmas. Uh, Christmas vacation. Well, anyway, um, but, uh, uh, you know, you look ahead at your Christmas vacation, and it seems like you, may, it's like, it's like you got a summertime almost. Well, a couple weeks, it's a long time. And so I, you know, put it off doing it. I'd think about it, and I'd put it off doing it, uh, put off doing it, and I'd think about it, put off doing it. Before I knew what's happening, I'm getting ready to go to school uh, on the next day, and I haven't done it. And I was thinking about it, and it was weighing heavy on my mind, so much so that I started crying about it. I don't know if it was real crying or crying so that I could be heard, and maybe somebody would feel sorry for me, which, which they did. My dad heard. He felt sorry for me. And he had some, um, some, you know, words to say about a teacher that would give a kid such an assignment on Christmas vacation. Now, look, at the fact of the matter is I had the time. I just didn't spend it wisely. And it, we can do that with our time uh, even on, on more important matters. Not that that wasn't important, but the matters become more increasingly important, it seems like, as we uh, get in our lives. And as our lives go farther and farther and our time uh, left becomes less and less, it's important 
to make good use of your time. How are you spending your time? Uh, look at the folks here in Acts chapter 17. These Athenians and these strangers, look at how they spent theirs. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Uh, they really just wasted their time just talking about stuff, <clears throat> wasting their time hearing or telling some new thing. Um, you know, one application of this is, I think about it, is the news. You know how they call the news the news? Because they're going to tell you new things that are happening. That, that, that's what it's about. Uh, the news is about what's new. And um, not only is this applicable, there, but, but you, can, you can waste a lot of time. Because look, let me just say this. But some people spend their time sometimes from the time they get up in the morning till the time they go to bed at night just listening to this. I mean, it used to be you'd have um, a 30-minute newscast. And, and where I grew up, Central Time was 10 o'clock. Uh, Eastern Time here, it's 11 o'clock. You'd have a 30-minute newscast, and that was about it. And then they added um, uh, an evening newscast. And then some places they added a late afternoon newscast before the evening newscast. Now you've got news stations that go on all day long, 24-7. And you can just you can burn out your brain, wasting your time for uh, just frittering it away, just listening to the news. What is it? Just hearing or telling some new thing. Well, and even when you if you if you just listen to the news over and over again all through the day, it's not even hearing or telling some new thing because they have their cycle and they go over and over and over and over and over. Sometimes I'll be doing something, you know, where I might have uh, a radio station on. For example, uh, when. When the election uh, was getting ready to roll around, I had some outside work to do. And so I, I uh, put in my, uh, you know, my Bluetooth earbuds and, and connected on the phone to listen to what uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh had to say. And uh, I, I, that's about the time when I might tune him in, usually with the elections, uh, something like that. One thing that came about as I was listening to that is, is man, he gave a great testimony of salvation in Jesus Christ using his name. He says, he, I don't proselytize, and, and, and he doesn't always use good words either <laughs> that he should, and he doesn't proselytize, but, but he just unashamedly uh, professed his faith in Jesus Christ as his Savior. But be that as it may, my point being is I, I was doing the outside work. I had, uh, I was listening to that, that and, you know, as time would go on, uh, you, you'd have news every half hour, and uh, you know what? They, you just start hearing the same headlines over and over and over and over again. So it doesn't even, it isn't always even news, but you can waste a lot of time uh, doing that. I don't think that you should be ignorant of what's going on, but uh, then again, you don't have to know, know every last detail of it. I mean, unless that's your, your business or something like that, but you can waste a lot of time and burn out a lot of brain cells and, uh, and it's, it's spend up a lot of um, energy getting angry about everything that's going on out there when you might be better served doing something else. Not only is this applicable to the news, these Athenians and strangers spending their time and nothing else but to either tell or to hear some new thing, um, it, can, it, it can often apply to our conversations with each other. All we want to do is hear or tell. It can a lot of times apply to gossip, hearing or telling some new thing about somebody else. And the Athenians spent their time doing just this, hearing and telling new things. Let me ask you something. Uh, what did the Athenians accomplish with this? Spending their time in nothing. But nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. What did they accomplish? Uh, I'll tell you what they accomplished. Nothing. Zilt. Zip. Nada. You say, what is nada? Uh, nada is a Spanish word. It means not a thing. That's what it means. They didn't, they didn't do anything. Time is a precious commodity. I'm saying be careful how you spend it. You make choices. You have choices. It is a precious commodity given to you by God, and it is not unlimited. You have a limited amount of time here on this earth. Learn to spend your time wisely. By way of contrast to the Athenians, let's go to the next chapter, Acts chapter 18, and look a little bit about the, how the Apostle Paul spent his time. Acts chapter 18. Acts 18, verse 22. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone down and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country 
of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. Well, Antioch, you remember from chapter 11, is where Paul and Barnabas spent about a year planting a church and uh, ministering the word of God and getting the folks established. So he's going back there, and just like he's doing in Galatia and Phrygia, he's strengthening all the disciples. Paul is taking his time and investing it in ministering to people. Notice again in verse 23, and after he had spent some time there. That's what we do with our time. We spend it. We choose what to do with it. We spend it. We can spend it wisely. We can spend it foolishly. And uh, too many people fritter their time, waste their time. While the Athenians wasted their time, Paul invested his time. That's another financial word, monetary type word that we use in connection with time. We talk about investing our time. How do you invest your time? And uh, you want to invest your time wisely. Again, folks, you take um, uh, from a, a financial standpoint, with limited financial resources, people have to choose wisely what they invest their money in. Whether that be, you know, if they're investing in the stocks or bonds, uh, investing in property, uh, investing in, in people, investing in charity, uh, in Christian life, investing in missions or some other areas of God's work, uh, people have to choose wisely what they do with their limited resources. And with limited time, you've got to choose wisely how to invest your time. There's so much time that is just absolutely wasted, just absolutely wasted, and, and um, it's gone. And it just, it's like a vapor. Our life's like a vapor, a purifies a little time and vanish, vanish of the way, and we just take that time and just whoosh, let it just get snuffed out with um, no redeeming value. Our song in our hymn book says, Work for the Night is Coming, and in that song it says, Give every flying minute something to keep in store. Work for the time is coming when man works no more. And now you've got the chance to do something, so be wise with what you do with your time. Now tonight, uh, I, can, I can commend you, and you can feel good about it. Uh, you have chosen tonight to invest your time with the Lord by coming to church or by tuning into this message. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing to do. It's a good investment. Uh, not because of me, but because of the Lord and the Word of God that's being preached. And the Lord tells us, um, you know, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. This is part of what God would have his people to do. And just because less and less people are doing it, especially on a Sunday night, uh, doesn't mean that you want to follow suit. And you've made a wise choice. You've invested your time. You've, you, and, and that's going to pay dividends in your life, uh, both now and uh, in eternity. Uh, go with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, and let's take a look a little bit about uh, how Jesus and the apostles spent their time. Mark, chapter 6. You know this thing about time while you're turning there? Uh, different people may have different talents and ability levels, but you know what uh, we all have in common? Same amount of time. We all have 24 hours in a day. And uh, it's, uh, I think 168 hours in a week. I, I think that's the, the right total, seven times 24, 20, 168 hours uh, in, in a week. We all got that, uh, that same amount. And it's a matter of what we do with it. Now, I know different things can gobble up your time and different responsibilities can, can cause you maybe to have less free time. But again, many of those things are brought about by our own choices. So choose wisely. We all have... Um, we all got this. We all got a 24 hour day and 168 hour week. Let's make the most of it. Make the best of it. In Mark chapter six, verse 30, see what's going on here. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. So they'd been out ministering. The Lord had sent them out like he did in Luke chapter 10 and uh, or, or chapter nine or chapter 10 in there. And then they came back and they're telling him about what they did, what they taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going. They had no leisure so much as to eat. They'd been using their time uh, to, to work hard, and now they needed some rest. But uh, before that happened, we read this in verse 32. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. 
just like they ran faster than the ship could sail and got there before him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. What's he doing? He's making good use of his time. And then we read this in verse 35. And when the day was now far spent, the day was far spent. The time of that day was spent. They, but they spent their time serving the Lord, spent their time ministering to the people. And when it got to the end, and when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place, and now the time is far past. See, the day is far spent, the time is far past. That's the term he's using. Uh, it's a, again, a financial type term. You're spending that time. He's investing it. What's he doing? He's investing it in, in people, investing it in ministering the word of God. He's making good use of that time. Uh, and again, you only have so much time. So that's what the Lord was doing. That's what the apostles were doing uh, together with him. Uh, we do something with our time. We spend our time. The, the big picture of our time is represented by our life or our lifetime. And we spend our lives. We spend our lives. But the way we spend our lives is just determined by how we spend uh, increments of our time. The way we spend our lives, come to Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Now, I was reading through this recently, and the term was here, and I, I don't know that I'd ever connected it as being here, but uh, just right along the line of what we're saying, and in Psalm 90... He's talking about, uh, well, let's go to verse number nine. He says, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. And then he said this, we spend our years as a tale that is told. We spend our years. Again, it's, it's spending your time. And you spend your lives, you spend your life based upon how you spend our year, your years. And uh, I, I got just a little bit ahead of myself. So uh, hold that thought and I will be back to it. But uh, in Ecclesiastes, and you can turn there or you can listen, whatever works for you right now. But I'm going to give you Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse number 12. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 12. And that says, For who knoweth what is good for a man in this life all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow? For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? His vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. Now, you know, Solomon's got this pessimistic attitude of life under the sun without really taking that life above the sun up into eternity into consideration. And he's seeing the vanity of all of it. But uh, notice again the term just for uh, application to the message tonight. He's talking about his life, which he spendeth. His vain life, he says, which he spendeth as a shadow. We spend our lives. We spend our lives. We, we have lives that we spend. We spend our life uh, doing different things. Um, we, in regard to spending... Uh, time we say in spending a life that a, like a husband and a wife might spend a lifetime together. Uh, you might spend your life in a particular profession. The point being that in spending time, we spend our lives. And he's talking about that life being spent in Ecclesiastes chapter 6 is one of the places where you see it spoken about in the scriptures. As we spend our lives, the way we spend our lives, again, is, is incrementally. And so when you break down your life, uh, you can break it down into years. And that's what Moses is talking about. This psalm is a, a psalm. It's a prayer of Moses, the man of God. And he said, we spend our years as a tale that is told. My life is made up of years. And my years, the years go by, my uh, life goes by, your life goes by. And by the way, that's uh, the context. A lifetime is the context of this. And of verse 9, we spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. What's he telling you? Well, we got uh, threescore and ten. That's um, uh, scores twenty. Three times twenty is sixty. Add ten more, seventy years. Or by reason of strength, strength fourscore. Now, I know that doesn't mean that everybody lives either seven, anywhere from seventy to eighty years, but that's an average. Some live lo lo longer, some live shorter. But on average, that's the lifespan uh, of a man in uh, his uh, generation. And the, the days, or 
the days of our years make up our life, our three score and ten, or our four score, as it were. That's what it's made up of. So our lives are made up of years. But years are also made up of something. And we could break them down into months and weeks, but let's just go down to uh, the basic thing that they're made up of, and that would be days. And so come with me to the book of uh, Job, chapter 36. Job 36. Job 36. And before we get into that, again, let me just read it. Here our, here's our life. Okay, we got a lifetime to spend doing something. What are you going to spend your life doing? What, what, are you, what are you doing with your life? How are you spending that life? Uh, the lifetime is made up of years. So as you look at what you do in a, in a given year and then another one, another one, those years combine together to make your life. That's why it's such important, to, again, as we even talked about this morning, as we're facing a new year, uh, to, to try to, as it were, grab it by the horns and get something done with it by the grace of God to challenge yourself to some important accomplishments uh, this year. So a lifetime is made up of years. Years are made up of days. Job chapter 36, beginning in verse number 9. Then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. What is he talking about? He's talking about God's blessing upon those that obey him, obey his word. But he's talking again there about how they spend their days and the spiritual, uh, in spiritual blessing, the spiritual blessing of God. And he's talking about spending your days. It's spending your time. How do you spend your days? How are you going to spend your life? How are you going to spend your years? How are you going to spend your time? However you break it up, Whatever increment uh, you, you um, divide it up into, uh, you spend it. You choose how you spend it. You choose what you do with it. The question we really need to, to deal with here about these days is, again, how do you spend those days? How do you spend them? Because how you spend your days determines how you spend your years, and how you spend your years determines how you spend your lifetime, and how you spend your lifetime determines how it's going to be for you when you stand before God. And how it's going to be for you during that lifetime. It's choices, people. It's choices. You make choices. You got the 24 hours. Um, you have a new one starting at a new set of 24 hours starting at midnight. Uh, or if you, if you like to start your fiscal day at a different hour, uh, you got 24 hours coming. Okay? And 168 hours between uh, now and, and uh, this time next week. What you going to do with it? I mean, grab hold of some of that time. Don't just lose it. Don't just spend it all uh, resting and spend it all playing and spend it all just, um, you know, doing whatever. That, that's kind of like the Athenians just spending it in nothing else but stuff that wasn't worth anything. Don't, don't waste your time like that. How are you spending your time? Are, are you wasting it? Are you investing it? Are you redeeming it? That's one of the most... Uh, prominent Bible terms about time that's associated with money. Redeeming the time. Redeeming it. Redeeming it, again, a, a financial has a financial connotation to it. Um, we redeem coupons or offers in order to save some money. Uh, we redeem uh, certain plastic bottles that have deposits on them and, and get money back uh, from them. Matter of fact, in the Bible, Numbers chapter 3, verse 49, speaks about the redemption money. And redeeming is, is and redemption has an association with it <coughs> and uh, money. <coughs> um, so much so that when the Lord talks about our own redemption, he makes, before he tells us about us being redeemed with the blood of Christ, he says, we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Because there are some things that are redeemed like that. And you can see a bunch of that back in the Old Testament uh, economy, the redemption they would have. Uh, using uh, money to redeem things. But God tells us to redeem the time. Colossians 4 and verse number 5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Uh, more famously, uh, referring to redeeming the time, is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 16. Let's go there and see that. Ephesians 5, verse 16.
Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 16. There it is, real simple. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, why does he say it like that? Because if you let them, the days will just eat up your time without you having any, without, without you gaining any redemptive value from them. Sometimes uh, the cares of this world, you know, just want to just, you got to deal with them, but they'll, they'll take up a lot of time. And there's going to be time when you're just going to have to stop the world and get off for a little bit. Off alone with the Lord. Off alone investing your time. Uh, uh, off alone doing uh, some, some things with your time that uh, glorify God, which in turn benefits you. He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's the scripture's commentary on him. Now, I want you to note that all this, although this statement stands well upon its uh, own, uh, this is actually the end of a sentence that began in verse number 15. So let's go back and pick uh, verse 15 up together along with it and get the full fullness of the thought where he says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. Uh, circumspectly. It's almost uh, the idea of diligently, but it's, it's you're paying attention to detail. You're, you're checking out everything circumspectly. You're looking around and making sure it's all in order. You're being circumspect. See, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, foolish people just let all their time fritter away, all their time waste away. Now, there's going to be times when you're going to want to relax, and that's uh, when I'll get to that in a moment. But um, I'm saying make sure that you're doing some things with your time that are going to last for eternity. Again, you made a good choice tonight. Now, during the week between now and, and next time you come to church, make some more good choices because it's important and you've got a limited amount of time. So you're going to want to redeem that time. And that's what it has to do with redeeming the time, making good use of your time, spending it wisely, making good choices with, with what you do with it. Sometimes you can redeem some time by getting or making use of time-saving devices or strategies. You can actually gain some time. Um, was, it, was it Ben Franklin uh, that would say uh, a penny saved is a penny earned? Was, that, that old ben? was it poor Ben's almanac or whatever? But uh, a penny saved is a penny earned. Well, if a penny saved is a penny earned, then a minute saved is a minute earned. Or five minutes saved is five minutes earned. Or an hour saved is an hour earned. And, and if you can, by virtue of a time-saving device or by virtue of um, a time-saving strategy, save yourself some minutes, then you can recoup those minutes for something else that might be more beneficial. Sometimes the things that we have to do can be done a little better or a little quicker. Now, you, now it's not always the case. I'm not saying always look for the shortcut. Sometimes, sometimes the shortcut is doing thing, a thing the long way. Because by doing it the short way, it's going to cost you more time later on. But there are times when the same job can be done in lesser time with just as, as much quality. Uh, off the wall illustration. Um, you know, I, spend, uh, I have to spend a lot of time you know, punching things out, cranking things out with a, a computer and keyboard. Um, in, uh, in documents like, uh, like I do the, the messages here. Um, and I noticed that there are certain things just the way that I do them that um, it's, it's, it's more than just typing out. Boom, boom. I, I make certain emphasis, whether putting something in bold, using a, a symbol, different things like that to get, to get the thing done. And um, I noticed that if there was a quicker way to do some of those things, I could, I could type this thing faster, and, and sometimes that's important in order to be able to not miss a thought be before I can get it, on, get it down. <laughs> and so there are certain strategies you can use. Uh, there's, they, have on, they have in word processing programs, most of them, probably maybe all of them, but they have keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Now, the mouse is a great invention and has its play, play and purposes for the computer, but sometimes things that you can do with the mouse 
where you take it and grab it. And sometimes those things can be done more quickly with a keyboard shortcut. So while if I already have the mouse in hand and because I'm doing something else, maybe I can click on uh, a, 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 the big bold B for uh, putting something in bold or the I for italics and, and it's already got. But if I'm on the keyboard and I want to do it, I can use a keyboard shortcut. I can use control I and I can set it up for italics. I can use control B and I can set it up for bold. Um, I can use my keyboard and, and actually highlight uh, something and then uh, do control U for underline. I, I sometimes use for certain emphasis um, a double underline. And I have uh, an icon up there that I can just go click on and, and used to have to you know, find it and, and get, but then I can find I could put an icon on there with a double icon so I can just click on that thing and, and have a double underline. But it still was tedious. I, I wish there was a way that I could do it just like I do control U, I wish there was a way I could and get an underline. I wish there was a way I could do control something and double underline it. So I got looking into it and I found some information about how to make what they call macros and, and, and create your own keyboard shortcuts. So long story short, by doing this thing, I was able to make my own macro for a number of different things that, that I regularly do. And, and uh, what I did is I, I, I well, let's, let, let me tell you, first of all, how the double underline works now. After performing the macro and getting the thing set up, now all I have to do is press Control-7, and I get a double underline. Or set up the next word for double underline, and then Control-7 again, turn it off. <laughs> so what I had to do, though, was on a certain day, when I was already had a pile of work to do, I decided, you know what, by taking a bunch of time and getting this stuff down and working at it and making a bunch of these, I can save myself time in the future. So I spent, I don't know how many, how much time, a couple hours, three hours, I don't know how long it took, but I spent a good amount of time working on that, setting the thing up. And so now the, the word processing program works like that and I can go control this and make this happen, go make this, little, little bitty things. That uh, that cost and it and it allows me to get things down qu more quickly and the flow of information to come from my brain uh, to to being recorded before I lose it. I mean lose not lose it like go crazy. Of course that could happen too, but I mean lose the information. So what I'm saying is, we talk about saving money, right? And we also talk about saving time. Again, it's just the, it's connected with with finances for some reason. There's this parallel uh, between them. So if you can find something to to save you some time, then you can recoup that time and you can use it for something else. And that's a that's that's a good thing. <coughs> in, in in a proper when it's a proper way when when again you're not compromising the thing by by taking a, a shortcut. Uh, a side note, not, not necessarily a side note, but just to more bolster this uh, idea of time and money association, it's interesting to note another word that is used for money is the word currency. The word currency comes from the word current. Current is a time designation. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 23 and verse 16, it uh, uses this term. It says this. I'll just give you part of the verse. It says, 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. So it was called, called currency because it was current money. Now, today, we tend to call our paper money currency. But then it, back then, it was just whatever you was currently used for, for money. It could have been the silver, the gold. In this case, it was 400 shekels of silver. It was silver. That was current money that was used. And again, we've come to call it currency. But interesting that, that, that it... It uses something that has to do with, with a time designation. What we currently do in this current time, this is what is used. So there, there it is again. And again, I, as I said before, they, they say time is money. Um, think about that in the sense of treasure in heaven. You choose how to spend and invest your time. So you need to choose wisely and, and if you choose to invest your time and your effort and your energy in some things for God, then that helps to turn that time into heavenly treasure, where your time actually is money. You, if you take nothing else away from this, 
if you can only take one thing away from this entire message, this is what I want you to take away. Every week you go out there, you make it a priority to invest some of your time and a decent amount of it in doing something spiritual, investing time reading the Word of God, investing time in prayer, investing time in getting out tracks, investing time in ministering to somebody, ministering the Word of God, or just ministering to some need that they have, investing time in, 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 in something that's worthwhile. You know, we're talking, I'm asking tonight, how are you spending your time? And you need to answer that. How are you spending your time? And I want to tell you that how you are spending your time might be costing you something. It might be costing you rewards up in heaven. It might be costing you spiritual benefits because you're just you're wasting too much of it. I, it's, it's, it's important. You know, sometimes you have to make a choice between God's riches and uh, what the world has to offer. Sometimes you've got to make a choice between God's riches and the world's riches and when it comes to what to do with your time. Proverbs 16, 16, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. Sometimes you might have a choice between doing something extra to, to gain some money or spending that time that you're supposed to spend in church or with the Lord. And, and it's a choice that you make. Spending your time, spending your days. Job 21 verse 13 says, They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. It's important to remember that uh, only one life, there's only one life will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. And while God is good to us and gives us blessings and does indeed giveth us richly all things to enjoy, let's not get so caught up in those things that we forget about investing our time for Him. Because there's going to come a time, like it happened with that uh, rich young, um, with that the rich man who said he had, I got many goods laid up for many years, uh, said to his soul, soul, take thine ease, eat, drink, be married. You got all these goods laid up, and the Lord said, uh, Thou fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? I'm just saying, life is more than just what we can collect. It's more than just what the substance that we get and the, the money that we have and the things that we do and the possessions that we, we have. It's much more than that. And God may give us those things richly to enjoy, but let's not get hung up on those things and miss out on the real uh, true riches in substance. You know, the prodigal son, the Bible says, he wasted his substance, wasted his substance. That was the inheritance that he got. Took it out, his lot. I mean, he, his dad gave it to him before he, his dad died, but that was his portion. He said, give, give, give it to me now. He took it. He wasted his substance with riotous living. Wasted his substance. It's like, again, like wasting money. We talk about wasting money. We talk about wasting time, and he did. Uh, somebody said uh, to a person one time, it's probably been asked many times, hey, what you doing? And the person said, oh, I'm just killing time. And this guy responded saying, um, he said, I'm killing time. He said, no time's killing you. We, got, we only got a few, a certain amount of days, and again, it's a, like a vapor, a little drop of um, uh, droplets of water in the air that appear and then they're gone, or even just like a little drop of water in the ocean. We, we got that little time. We got to redeem it. We got to redeem it. We spend, like, again, a lot of our time, you know, gaining things, and, you know, you, you, you work and, and, and you gain these things. I, when my mom was sick, um, just after she'd gotten to the hospital, I believe it was, my, I was talking to my dad on the phone, um, you know, I, I can, I was outside doing work and he called and I was sitting on the, I think I was sitting on the lawnmower in the back, just, uh, uh talking to him, but, uh, he just, he made comments about things like, uh, you know, and he wasn't sick at the time, but you know, he's like, you know, you work your whole life. He said to, uh, you know, gain all this stuff or whatever that you got. And then you just get the, you can't even, you can't even enjoy it. And, he just was observing. He, he wasn't complaining so much as, as observing, kind of like Solomon was doing in, in Ecclesiastes. And I, and I told him, I said, yeah, you know, I said, since you retired, um, you know, all you've done is you've pretty much been a caregiver. 
I mean, it's like my dad no sooner retired and then he had become caregiver for his, his dad, my grandpa, and, and would take care of him and then my grandpa died. And then he became caregiver for uh, his mom, my grandma. She was getting older. She was still living in Arizona. He went and brought her up. Um, they got a place for her and uh, was caregiver for her. And she passed away. About that time, my mom's getting uh, ill. And he's, he's, he's becoming a caregiver for her with her COPD and getting her to her doctor's appointments and her multiple myeloma and just, just giving, taking care of them. And I told him, I said, yeah, you've pretty much been a caregiver, you know, for somebody else. And he said to me, he said, that's okay. That's okay. For him, it was a labor of love. He was glad to do it. Uh, what did he do? He, he, he chose to spend his time. So maybe he didn't get a, get a chance to do everything that he, he would have liked to have done. But um, he spent it being a help to other people that needed him. I think of the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthians. He said, I will gl very gladly spend and be spent for you. Uh, let's make use of our lives. Don't, don't just take the rest of it, however long you got, and just say, oh, I'm just going to kind of coast in the end till I run out of gas. <laughs> nah, it's almost over. I just sit back, you know, and grab all the enjoyment I can out of this life because I'm believing it too. No, 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 man. May, make some good use of this time. May, make a few more marks before you go for good and for God. Sometimes we make a mistake uh, of just taking the blessings and letting the blessings waste our, our times in life. I read in uh, Genesis 49 about Issachar, and it says Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant under tribute. It, it's like he got looking at this and said, boy, this is a nice piece of stuff, land to have here. I like to get it. Boy, this is, we can just rest. I'm going to get this. I'm going to, I'm going to gain this. And, and, and it's like he, in the passage, like he leveraged himself so much into debt, trying to gain these things so he could enjoy uh, rest in the land because it was pleasant. But he became a servant under tribute. Uh, you know, like I owe, I owe. So off to work I go. It's kind of like it was. Now, rest is good. But where some people make a mistake is they want to make all their lives about rest and, and, and about fun. And while you might need some R&R and &R and uh, while you might need some R&R and &R, and R, rest and relaxation and regeneration, that's not what you want to spend all your time on. I mean, maybe it's what you want to spend all your time on, but that's not what you're supposed to spend all your time on. Rest and relaxation and regeneration, one of its purposes is, is to recoup your strength so you can go back out and do some work, get something done. Uh Crowning day is going to be here soon enough. Sometimes it seems like, well, why is it taking the Lord so long to come? But you know, if that trumpet sounded tonight, it's like, whoa, already? About how you'd feel if you had a chance to, to think about it. And he's going to come soon enough. And soon enough, we're going to lay down our sword and shield down by the riverside, down by the riverside. But today is not crowning day. Today is cross bearing day. And when Jesus said about that cross, you're to take up your cross daily. Daily, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. And he said in, in full, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So sometimes you might have to deny yourself some of your fun, some of your rest in order to invest it wisely. I don't say you can never relax. I don't say you can never have fun. Go ahead, relax. Go ahead, have fun. But invest some time as well for the Lord. Maybe take... Take inventory of your time and maybe see, and be honest, if you're spending too much time just frittering stuff away, frittering away too much of your time and invest in some more uh, for the Lord uh, by spending time, spending time and redeeming time uh, to, in, in labors for him and spiritual things and being a blessing and ministering uh, to somebody else. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And that's where that song comes that, from that I Referenced earlier, work for the night is coming when man works no more. i got to work them all their day. So there's coming a time when I can't work anymore. This is our chance. This is our opportunity. Once that trumpet sounds, no more chance to labor for the Lord by faith. Oh, sure, we'll serve him for all of eternity. But this is a special time. You've not seen him, and, and God knows that. 
and, and you haven't seen him, but you love him. You're living by faith and you're pleasing him by faith. And it all changes once we get up there. I mean, I'll, grand, 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 it'll change for the better. But God has given us this unique opportunity. Take advantage of it because you're not going to have it forever. You only have it for a little time. What's, uh, what's say at the scriptures? Romans 13, 11 and 12, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now, uh, just a few more things and I'm, I'm finished. Uh, a few quick things and I'll be finished. Uh, I'll have you go one more place. I'm going to have you go. I'm going to have you go two more places, but it'll be quick. Joel chapter two. I'll go one now and then one right at the end. Joel two. I could be talking to somebody tonight that maybe it's you're thinking, well, man, it's, it's a little, you know, I've already it's a little late. I've already spent most of my life, or I've wasted too much time, and it's too late to do anything. You know, if you'll repent at the rebuke of God, if that's what it is to you. You know, God can do some amazing things. And look, here's one of the things that God can do in Joel chapter 2 and verse number 25. He says there, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. All that stuff that they devoured, he said, I'll restore it to you. What is he talking about restoring? Talking about restoring years, time. So God can do great and mighty things. You just got to do your part. And, and if that part is repenting and getting right, do that. But God's able to, to make good use of your time and multiply it. The truth of the matter is, let's, when it comes to what we do, I mean, people, people talk about, I don't have time to do this. I mean, I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to uh, go with I don't have time. I don't have time to come to church all the time, you know, and go to all this. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. The truth matters, folks. Here's the truth. You find time to do what you want to do. And if you wanted to do those things that the Lord wants you to do bad enough, you find the time to do them. A few little thoughts about, about how to make the best use of your time. Number one, prioritize. What does prioritize mean? Do the, do the things that are most important first. A lot of times you, folks don't prioritize their Bible reading, they don't get it done because the rest of the day comes in and, and, and crowds it out. But if you can work to get it done first or as early as possible, and not put it off to the end of the day, you have less days when you never get to it. So prioritize things. You have to make choices about your time. Prioritize. Uh, you prioritize your time tonight to be church time. Sunday morning, we prior to be church time. Wednesday night, prior and, and, and then you make priorities there. So prioritize. Um, if you have to, write down all the things that you have to get done, and then uh, assign them a value from most important to least important. And where there is potential flexibility, you again, you do the most important things first. And then the other ones you get to if you can. So make wise choices. Uh, then schedule things. Schedule things. Just, you, you know, there's a lot of things that folks schedule. And then they keep schedule. If you, if you make an appointment with a doctor, you generally go to the doctor because that's when your appointment is. So, so make something that's, that is a priority Make a time where you schedule the time to do it. Schedule, schedule these things and just hold yourself to it. If you schedule something where you're obligated because somebody else expects you to be there, you do it. Well, obligate yourself to God and, 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 and schedule things. Um, some years ago, I heard a man talk about the ministries. Before I got into the ministry, he's teaching us about the ministry. He said, the ministry is a set schedule with constant interruptions. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. But it's not just the ministry that's like that. So are a lot of things that, that folks do in everyday life. Everyday life sometimes is a set schedule with constant interruptions. You're trying to ward off these things that, that 
maybe aren't as important as what you have to do. But then again, sometimes while I'm engaged in something that is important, something else comes up that's also important. So what I'm saying is, even though you make, a, make priorities, even though you set a schedule of things to do, be flexible. Be flexible. And don't let something that interrupts what you want to do keep you from getting that thing done. You just might have to get back to it when you're done with that other interruption. It's all important because go to Revelation chapter 10 and we're done. And Jesus acknowledged uh, what I'm about to show you in John chapter 9, which we read a little while ago, about work for the night cometh when no man can work. And we'll, we'll close here. Revelation 10. We're talking about redeeming the time, investing your time, spending your time wisely, asking tonight, how are you spending your time? How are you doing all these things? Why? Because in Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, it says, And swear by him, this is the angel of verse 5, he lifted up his hand to heaven. We'll start, let's go ahead and start in verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are there, and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Time no longer comes to an end. And there's coming a time when there's going to be time no longer. So work. Because night's come when no man can work. So how are you spending your time? Let's pray. Father in heaven, teach us, Lord, like the psalmist said, to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to spend our time wisely. Thank you that we do have some time some downtime and some rest time. But, but, but let's not take all that free time, Lord. Help us not take all that free time and just, and just waste it. Sometimes teach us, Lord, to, to cut out uh, some of that free time and carve it out, Lord, uh, for Thee and uh, invest it wisely. Make the best use of it. Teach us to redeem it. Teach us to spend our time wisely. And I pray You'd help us to do that and to remember it. And uh, may this make a difference in our lives and eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's uh, stand tonight. We'll take a time and let the music play and give you a chance to pray about some of these things. And again, ask the Lord's help because He is able to help. Let's take our song books, sing the song that's playing. It's 357, Work for the Night is Coming. 357, based on John 9, mentioned it in, in the message, but uh, let's sing it out. 357. <laughs> 